this video, I'm gonna show you step-by-step step on how I made these custom taillights with materials that you can buy online. And to help you build these taillights, I'm gonna give away an Amazon gift card to one of my subscribers, so please stay tuned at the end of the video to see how to get in. Hi, so welcome back to another video in the build process of my wide body 3000 GT. Over the past few years while I've been building this car, one of the things I really wanted to change out was the tail lights. And the problem is they don't make aftermarket tail lights. You either have to make your own or find someone who can make them for you. So in this video, I'll show you how I took this factory tail light and turned it into this. So all that's left is to start making these tail lights. So please follow along. If you have any questions, feel free to ask and I'll try to answer them to the best I can. So let's go. This is the stock 3000 GT tail light. It has three bulbs inside. All three light up as markers. These two will light up as a brake. This one will flash as a turn signal. So in the quest to make the aftermarket tail lights. I came up with many designs, prototypes, and they all eventually got scrapped just because I wasn't feeling how they looked. One of my earliest ones consisted of this kind of eh, questionable design. We scrapped that one. Then I tried halo rings with the reflector in the middle. Still wasn't a big fan of that. And eventually I came up with this X prototype. Lots of soldering. Another X prototype. Finally, the concept. Also on the corners, I tried different things such as the stacked halo. Didn't really feel that one. Little, little arrows, didn't work on that. Then I came up with this design. Kind of matches the same layout as the X's. Even built a template so I could drill all the holes equally each time. And just wasn't really feeling that design at all. Which led me to the final product. Which is this. Three recessed halo rings with X LEDs inside and this chasing amber light. Each of these rings will light up as markers. This will light up as a marker. When you hit the brakes, the, the markers will turn off, the X's will turn on, and when you put it in turn signal, it'll sequential across. And that will look a little something like this. Nice recessed, gives a little depth to the halos and the amber ring. That's what happens when you hit the brakes. The halos turn off and the X's light up. And turn signals. So the first step to get to this process was I have to scrap the American taillight, which has red corners for the GTO with the amber corners. But the first thing we need to do is get these lenses apart from the housings. And to do that, we need to bake some taillights. So the reason we need to bake the taillight in the oven is this particular one is held together with a line of sealant glue that connects the lens to the body. And there's several ways of doing it. If you look online, people say 350 to 70. Honestly, the best I found for this particular light is about 200 degrees for maybe seven to 10 minutes. Just monitor it, make sure it doesn't get too hot. Ask me how I know. Well, when you follow the instructions online, sometimes you might burn things. So just use that as a word of caution. 
Just keep an eye on it. Make sure nothing weird is happening in the oven, melting. You don't want to catch your house on fire. That wouldn't look too good. So, first thing we need to do is go ahead and set the oven to 200 degrees and let it preheat. Now that the oven is up to temperature, all we have to do is just place a light. I like to place it on a hard surface. Let it go. All right, it has been about 10 minutes. The light feels about right. It is hot to the touch, but not too hot for me to hold. But by all means, use oven mitts when doing this. All right, the glue is hot enough that it should release the lens. And this next step is very important. So that's why I have my supervisor with me. So you're not gonna wanna, no, not that one. You're not gonna grab the biggest, baddest screwdriver you have to do this because the metal can mar the plastics or even crack the lens. So I highly recommend getting plastic pry, uh, pry tools here. You can get it at Harbor Freight, Amazon, they're pretty inexpensive. And this will help prevent accidental breaking of the plastic or the lenses. Well, supervisor's no longer on duty. And by all means, take your time. I find, just get a little purchase point and slowly work your way around the lens. Not going too fast. On this light, there's three little clips on the bottom here. Looks like one up here, and there's a couple around the edges on the corner lens. Sorry if that's hard to see. There, there, and there. All you want to do is just slowly pry around those. And you can see the glue right there. It's starting to let loose. Come on the top side, do the same. Just like that. Red lens off. Now let's get the amber off. So as you're prying this apart, you may find the glue will start to harden back up. So that's easy by just putting it back in the oven for a few more minutes, keep an eye on it, and come back and continue the process. And one other thing, while this part is still hot, you can get down in the cracks all around here and remove as much of this sealant as you can. Also around the lens, it's a good time while it's all still warm. And then the next up is we start assembling the innards. Once everything's out of the oven, this is what you're left with. Two outer lenses, these inner little reflectors, and the main body housing. So what we need to do now is make a template of the inside for the plastic to lay. I found the easiest way to um, make a template is to use these guys, because I mean, we're not gonna use them anymore. Just take some tape, tape them off, you know, just lay it on, cut it out with a razor, and then you should be left with something just like this. And um, what's good about this being on tape is when I go to lay it on the plastic that I'm gonna cut, I can actually lay it, it stays on there, trace it, cut it, and it's good to go. At this point, I have laid my template out on this piece of plastic, marked where I need to cut, and now we just cut it out.
All right, at this point, both plastics have been cut out for the inserts. They just needed to be curved to fit the shape of this housing. That can easily be done by throwing them back in the oven for about, you know, five or six minutes at 300 degrees, and then it allows you to curve it, and then you can run water over it to cool it down. But as you see, they fit in there pretty good. And that is the start of the layout. So now all we need to do is cut out these three holes and recess the little pockets. And to uh, give that depth look, I got these metal tins. They will go in each one of those holes. And those holes are relatively simple to cut out using this hole saw. So this is what is left after cutting the holes out. So now all I gotta do is just press in each one of these metal cups. And now I have the depth for my lights. So these will actually be inside of here. This is what the LEDs will be attached to. Which will end up looking something like this. And to make sure I get all these holes drilled properly, I have made a jig. And I'll go through and drill each one. Now to do that two more times. And like that, three completed, perfectly cut X's. Uh, so now all I have to do is take the 5 mil LEDs, place them in each one of these holes, wire them up to resistors, heat shrink them. There's going to be two channels per. So this right here is going to be one channel and these two little legs are going to be one channel. So that way I can have just the arrow light up or I can have the whole thing light up. So now all I have to do is uh, wire up a bunch of LEDs. Okay, this is one finished circle. It's 44 total LEDs, two separate channels. So if I apply power to this one, it should give us the turn signal. And this one should complete the X for the break. Just uh, gotta wire these two up and I'll be ready to start assembling this into the tail light. All three sets of LEDs are complete. I put a little bit of silicone around the LEDs to help keep them in place in the housings. I'm gonna let that silicone cure overnight and I'm gonna pick this back up in the morning. Good morning, everybody. It's the next day. The silicone has dried on the light. All they need to do is assemble them into those little metal buckets, get them mounted into the housings. I'm rocking my High profess shirt today. I got my sneak. Gotta love the little X. Alright, now it's time to assemble the lights. So we have these stainless steel cups, pre wired LED X's, set of halos, diffuser rings for the halos and these little spacers. I'll show you how all that goes together.
So the little black template here, the X template, will fit inside the spacer. And that will fit down inside the cup. And of course the halo ring will fit in like that. Okay, so all we have to do now is drill a hole in the side of the cup to run the wires through for the LEDs. Make it a little bit bigger. All right, that should be good. All right, so we got our hole there. We have a little notch there and a notch there. So all we have to do now is just line up. I like that, it's a nice snug fit. Try to get it as flush as you can to the edge. And then all I'm gonna do right here is just put a little bit of this tape on the edges because I'm gonna use some uh, two-part epoxy to adhere the edges. So this is just making sure that the, uh, the alignment doesn't come loose while the epoxy is being applied. Once the epoxy hardens, we will take the tape back off. All right, so all I gotta do now is mix up some epoxy, adhere it on the insides, and this should be set to uh, start curing. All right, so at this point, I have placed the metal cups into the plastic bezel. All the holes have been cut for the wire. And in the plastic housing for the light, I have also made the same three holes to allow the cups to pass through. I've got to put another round of epoxy on this, and once it's completely hardened, I will be able to set these two together. Okay, I've added a bead of silicone around the inside of the housing and these two should just slide together. So this is what it looks like with everything seated into place. There's the back side. The epoxy has completely set on this fixture. It's a nice flush to the edge. There's a hole here for the halos. And basically you'll just set just like that. Run some epoxy around the inside of the halo. And when you slide everything together, basically it looks like that but in there. All three lights have been set in epoxy and clamped. I will leave these to cure for a couple hours. So this next part is the most time consuming part. In this setup, there's three lights, but the lens has a reflector that sits right over that middle light. Uh, that's not gonna work for how I want it to do, but 
as long as you take your time, you can actually cut that reflector out. Just uh, saw it out and then different stages of sanding, kind of like I did when I was uh, refinishing the headlights on my wife's car. Just step the gradients up from like a very heavy grit all the way up to a very fine grit and then do a plastic polish and you should actually be able to eliminate that reflector. So, all right, this part uh, can be a little scary. All right, on the lens, you can see the reflector in the middle. There's a lip that's about a half inch tall and these little squares that give the reflected light. So basically all we need to do to get those off is start by cutting it. And I found the easiest way is just use this little, little saw. Our part's done. The uh, little rings are now flat. All we have to do is sand this down to get this clear finish like the rest of the lens. I know that looks pretty horrible, but the way we're gonna do that is sanding. And I'm gonna start off with a 60 grit, move up to an 80, 100, and slowly get higher. I found these little wedges actually work really well at getting in these cracks. Once we get that smooth, then we're going to slowly step up the sandpaper grits, you know, up to 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, all the way up to like a three and maybe even a 4,000 grit before we polish it and it will be as clear as the rest of this lens. And one other thing to keep an eye on as you're sanding is to uh, not let this piece get too hot. Because what can happen is when it gets hot, it'll start to warp a little bit and the plastic will start to uh, gum up and it's a lot harder to sand. But the biggest thing is you're just keeping it from starting to warp the lens because it will be thinner in this area. A uh, good way to do that is just as you're sanding, keep your hand on the back and you feel it start to get hot, just give it a, you know, a few minutes to cool back down and then go back to sanding. Okay, so this is the end result of 60 grit dry sanding moved up to an 80 grit wet sand. As you can see, the rough edges and the little triangles are now gone. I'm gonna continue wet sanding, but I'm gonna go ahead and bump up to 120 grit now. I'll do that for a few more cycles and then I'll move up to like a 180 grit. So all I do is just keep it nice and wet with a spray bottle. After it starts to get cloudy, I'll dump the, uh, the cloudy sandings into the trash can, change out the paper, and just keep repeating this process until it's much smoother. This is the end result of 180 grit. 
Now is a good time to step it up to 240. As you can see, it's a very messy process. A lot of uh, sanding, spraying with water, sanding, spraying water, it gets everywhere. So now to move up to the next grit. Now that 100% of the reflector is completely gone and smooth, I'm going to start hand sanding, starting with a 400 grit and slowly moving my way up all the way to a 3000 grit. Do you have to do all these steps? No, you can skip a lot of this if you want, but this is just what I'm gonna do to try to maximize as crystal clear of a finish as I can before I go into the polishing stage. 400. To save some time, I'm gonna jump through the steps, but just like with anything else, the final results are all in the prep work. So as long as you take your time, this thing will come out perfect. 600. Eight hundred. Thousand. Twelve hundred. Fifteen hundred. Two thousand. Twenty five hundred. Three thousand. When you are finished sanding, you'll be left with something like this. Yes, you can't see through it currently, but that is taken care of with Meguiar's plastic polish. I did cover how to restore your headlights with this in another video, so please go check that out if you want to see how this all takes place. But it's quite simple. You just put this on and use a uh, buffing pad and it will actually bring this to a crystal clear shine. Once you are done sanding and polishing, you are left with a perfectly clear lens with no more reflector. Okay, for the corner lens, we're gonna use the same piece of plastic that we did for the center with the three circles. I have a template I've already drawn out. We'll look a little something like that. And there's a, this little S design that we're going to utilize some silicone LED tracking that will snake through like that. This is the actual LEDs that will go inside that light up amber. And the end result, you know, something a little like that. All I have to do now is cut this out on my grinder and shape it to a, shape it to the corner.
the two pieces have been epoxied to the backer plate. It sits nice and flush in the corner. So now all we need to do is to fit in the little silicone shaft. Together. It looks something like that. Of course, that's not going to stay down because it's not been glued yet. But that is the corner lens. Okay, so what we are now left with are three pucks one, two, and three. And the corner. Each of the pucks have slightly different colors so that you can tell which ones are which once all the wires are in their final spot. And it is a very simple procedure to set them in these buckets. I did make these little pucks modular so let's say if one were to go bad I can then pull this back out. So all we need to do is just put a little bead of silicone around each of the rings and the reason I'm using silicone instead of epoxy, so that way, if these do go bad, it's easier to pop them free. And then all the wires will come down through this hole and into the corner, so they can all be wired up neatly in the corner and not have a big jumbled mess you know, behind your light. I have placed a bead of silicone around each of the buckets. And also with these pucks, as I did a mesh wire loop on each one to kind of make it cleaner than the final appearance. So all you have to do is snake this down through the hole in the bottom. So this little cutout we did right here will allow the wire to fold a little bit as we then place it in like that, kind of get it lined up. And it should push straight down in there. And that is one. We'll repeat the process with these other two. And like that we have magic. Now as you can tell, they are not completely lined up perfectly yet. There's a little bit of adjustment you can do. But what I'm gonna check real quick is just to make sure each one is at about equal depth. Yep, they are all, they're all about equal depth. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this clear roller on the flat edge and as you can see you can pick like this yellow line and you'll line this yellow line up with these bottom rows of LEDs on each one. Hey, you see this one's definitely turned this way but then you just slowly rotate them until the LEDs line up. Like that. And once all the LEDs are in place, this will be kind of what it looked like. I'll just mock this in real quick. And that is about what it will look like 
before you put the lenses on. Okay, what I ended up doing to connect the tail lights to the car is quite simple. I used one of the factory sockets for the bulbs that would normally plug in right here. And there's the eight channel connector. It's wire loomed up and it's pushed through here. So what I'll do is put a little bit of silicone in there, seal it up, let that cure. But the good part about this is that actually goes and locks in place. If I can get it, there we go. That locks in place, a nice clean appearance. There's where the wire comes up on the inside. But after I connect these to this, let's say I need to check a connection or even wire something up because there's gonna be extra channels in here that I'm not using. Without having to take all the lenses and everything back apart, I can just pop this out, pull out where I made my connection right here and actually check it, you know, out in the field. Everything is now completely soldered. All the wires are accessible by pulling them out the back if I need to work on them. So all I need to do now is just tuck them in. That can get locked into place. There's a nice clean harness. We can just get these tucked up. And this one will sit in just like that. Okay. All I need to do is just put a little bead of epoxy around that. And this unit is completely done. Ooh, that is looking good. All we need now is just the amber corner. that's pretty much it all we have to do now is just uh seal these tail lights back up and they are 100 done and what i have to seal the tail lights up is mori motors resealing glue it's butyl basically it's the same step as you would taking everything apart run a line all the way around everywhere the lens is going to meet put it back in the oven heat it up it'll get soft and then you just seat the lens back on, press nice and hard, let it cool down, and it should be completely sealed. Morimoto Butyl is relatively easy to install. So you just unroll, you know, a little bit of it, it does come pretty thick. You don't really need it that thick. So I find just stretching it out, make it, you know, it just makes it a little bit thinner. And it's as simple as just placing the butyl into the tracks where the lenses go. So I'm gonna start with this cross piece. I like to try to lay it flat. So that way when the lenses go in, they have a nice even seat. And then I just go around everything and just try to press it down deep in the channel all the way around. 
Okay, now is the perfect time to look over your piece one final time before putting it back in the oven because once you set the two together, it is completely sealed and you can't clean it. So make sure there's no fingerprints on the metal. There's no fingerprints on the inside of the lenses or any kind of debris inside here. So I found just blow it down with an air hose, wipe the lenses with a microfiber and just give it one final visual check. Make sure everything is to your liking and then we can head upstairs to the oven. Morimoto recommends that the butyl heat up in the oven at 265 degrees for about seven minutes. So let me step the oven. Once this gets up to temperature, I'm gonna pop this in. I'm gonna set a timer for seven minutes and then it will be as simple as just seating the lenses onto this housing for the final time. Also, anywhere I have exposed wire, I just like to wrap in foil. That's something I do. And it's just to make sure that anywhere that I have heat shrink or the wire loom just doesn't get affected by anything hot in the oven. Alexa, seven minute timer. Seven minutes, starting now. Ooh, that was a good pot. Nice and seated in place. All right, the corner's on. Make sure everything lines up in the correct spot. And it is all together. So one last thing I'll do while the butyl is still hot is I will clamp these edges until everything cools down. So that way it doesn't accidentally back off. But that's the final piece.
little thing that I snuck in there to go with the flashers. Ooh, ooh. Let's see here. Camera's having a hard time picking it up, but there's little sequential turn signals up there too. Oh man, can we just take a moment to appreciate this lineup? It is good seeing all three of them out at the same time. And there's that. Yeah, so that's a special little meatball right there. We'll, we'll discuss that one later. I swear I do not have a problem here while there's yet another parts car in the back. I, I swear, I swear there's not a problem here. And we'll get to that one another day. Yeah, let's just focus on these. All right. If you have made it this far, thank you. Hopefully this video has helped to inspire you at trying to make a set of custom taillights of your own. Please share this video with your friends because who knows, you may inspire them to make something truly amazing. And to help with that, I'm giving away a $50 Amazon gift card when I hit 500 subscribers. All you have to do is subscribe to this channel, drop a like on this video, and leave a comment. And as always, thank you for being awesome. I'm out in the colors, colors.